Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll look at the DC house, 51.2 volts, 50 amp hour battery, lithium ion phosphate. First of all, you can see it's already connected because it is already in use. The manufacturer DC house does sell it suitable for club cars and easy go golf carts. And they claim it's a grade A cell lithium ion phosphate. So even, they're not only advertising it for golf, cards obviously also for RVs, trolling motors, off-grid solar system etc. That's what they advertise it with and since I don't have a golf cart right here in my driveway because I don't have a driveway I have a garage but I don't have a golf cart we will try to mimic the draw and we'll try to um, have some load tests on this battery so just to see how good it is. So that means for this video we will talk about the specification of the battery also price-wise, what are you looking into that? We will be testing the capacity of this battery with, yes, you are right, and you see it already, right there is our MultiPlus 48 volt. And we will be pulling the entire capacity and we try to do some peak tests as well to see if we are able to draw a high load of this battery. And then we'll take it apart just to see and look inside what does this battery actually carry because it's advertised with great A cells. That is good to see. Um, does it say anything else? Um, I don't know. Let's just start with it, with the specification. So in the shipping box, we receive um, a little booklet, a little manual, if you want to call it, or they call it guidelines for safe use, as well as this little um, specification guide. That's all they provide with. And what you can see, I did already connect here on the side, but it does come with those caps. It does come with the needed bolts on those terminals, positive and negative over here. So you see, I use them both. I use them here as cover. It is nice aluminum housing all the way around. It does have handles on both sides, here and here, so you can lift it up. It has some weight to it, obviously. That's the front side. That's the back side, and what's cool about it, and I try to um, put some screenshots here as well, you have a data sheet here on this side. Um, obviously, this is a plaque aluminum housing with uh, um, Philip head screws over here, and it has those stickers on both sides. That's the rear, the other one's the front, at least in my opinion, <laughs> or in my case. And the data sheet, you can see that's the data sheet. It's rated voltage is 51.2 volts and the voltage range as well as the maximum continuous charge and discharge current of 50 amps. And this is the model, Echo, Echo LFP485002 lithium ion phosphate battery. We also can see the charging temperature, which they show right, 32 Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. It's uh, the bottom and the discharge temperature is a little bit wider, this range. So this is good to see. I also like that they have here the discharge capacity in terms of better discharge capacity at different ambient temperature, what they highlight here for this chemistry in this case. I did highlight, um, it's, it's a little heavy. <laughs> what do you think it, it weighs? Um, so you saw already the specs. So here it is again, it's about 58.42 pounds. And those are the dimensions in uh, millimeter and in inches. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. We do have a number of series and parallel connections. It's going up to 4P parallel and just 1S. So that means we can increase to 200 amp hours in a 51.2 volts configuration. That's good to see. So you can uh, stack them up here a little bit. Um, depends on how you want to have them. I do like that it's uh, aluminum housing. That is really nice to see. I, I actually like to see that in general way more. And what I advertise online, it's equipped with a robust battery management system, which is the BMS. It does say this battery is fortified against potential damage from high temperatures, low temperatures, short circuits, overcurrent and overload. So it's exceptional thermal and chemical stability eliminates the need for regular maintenance. So what will I'll definitely take a look into when we take it apart. Um, the high temperature and the low temperature, uh, it does say this battery is fortified against potential damage from those two. So does it mean, does it have high and low temp cutoff? It's not pointing it out directly, but I would assume it has it. We'll see. Um, otherwise they would probably 
call it out here more obvious that it does have a low temp cutoff protection i would assume we'll see we'll take a look into that because a golf cart when you look at that use case a golf cart does drive outside but um, i'm here in los angeles so california we have yeah it's definitely rare that we have below 32 or below 32 f or zero degree celsius so and when i would park it in the garage and then charge it it's always more <laughs> it's definitely more than uh, 40 degree usually so fahrenheit in this case so that's that's definitely some something um, would i need a low temp cutoff probably not for this use case but i like the form factor of this battery as i mentioned uh, it is a nice form factor and i see potent i see a big potential at the moment for this battery in my cheap wrangler actually because uh, the way i built the platform in the rear i don't know if you remember that um i should be able to store it underneath the platform better than i did it so far with uh, the two power queen batteries up there anyways without further ado let's continue with the capacity test before we do anything else so let's switch over okay i have the test set up um, you can see i just charged it to full right underneath here right here we have our dc house 51.2 volts 50 amp hours lithium ion phosphate battery okay for the capacity test everything is fully charged you can see it's still dropping just disconnected it and everything else is pretty much ready to go so it means i'll kick everything on Yeah, we should be almost at 0.2C, so that looks pretty good this time. So we'll be back after this test is completed and then we'll see if we're actually able to pull the full 50 amp hours out of this 51.2 volt lithium ion phosphate battery pack. So in between, of course, I made a mistake. As you can know, 0.2C is 10 amps on this 50 amp hour battery so adjusted this already accordingly we'll see if we're running short we will need to redo this recording and this capacity test but let's see how it finishes up Oh, there we just had a low battery shut off from the inverter. But, yeah, look at this, the capacity test is passed with 52.8 amp hours of this 51.2 volt lithium ion phosphate battery from DC House. That's great to see. I like that. I'm really happy to see that. Let's continue with the video. It's really good to see that it did pass the capacity test. I'm happy to see this. The next steps will be, we'll do a max discharge we'll test if we can pull more than 50 amp with the 51.2 volts here so that's the wattage so it should be around 2560 watts we want to draw and if we can go above great so we do have the multi plus 2 which is a 48 volt 3000 volt amperage 
inverter continuously and peak is uh, either five or six thousand i believe we have plenty of room so let me get it set up and let's see how much we can pull all right so we do have our victron set up here and that's what we're using here you can see the batteries at 100 percent pretty much let me activate the inverter which is so great to do here and when doing that you're gonna say here the heat gun will be using the heat gun as triggering the peak we'll be also using a charger which will plug in first and charge another battery so that means for me turn on not both at the same time i wanted to turn on just one so right now battery charger is kicking in it's a 40 amp uh, battery charger i believe yes it is confirmed so that means it's around 480 watts and here we can see it needs them around 652 so due to efficiency and everything else so we're not getting very far with this so shouldn't be a problem let me <coughs> let me plug in a second torture because as you because as you know me i like to keep the power within a system so i'm not wasting a lot of the power that would be a bummer for me Okay, the second battery is just connected, it's ramping up as well. We're pulling a thousand watt right now, so one kilowatt. Yeah, we are definitely below what should be possible, as you remember. So we should somehow get to 2560 at least. So let's start the heat gun on low. That's what's happening. You can see 1.8 kilowatt. Good to see. Not enough, I'll we'll crank it all the way up. Oh, interesting. The inverter just said overload, still says overload. It's handling it fine so far. Okay. Uh, we are at 2.65. So we are above the 2560, which we should pull. So let's see. Fifty-five point six amps. Fifty-five point eight. Very good. We are above. We are above the fifty amps, and it's advertised with fifty. And I don't know how long the peak is, so we are higher right now. Wires are cold. Pretty good. I like that. Inverter is handling it as well. I don't see any overload anymore. That is good. That is nice to see. Even if you go with uh, 50, 55 continuously, it looks like it's doing it pretty well so far. 55.9, 55.8, it's pretty consistent right now, as you can see here on the right, side, right, right bottom. Nice. This is nice. You can imagine sitting in a golf cart, cruising around with this battery in it. Oh, nice. <laughs> This is a nice form fact, as I mentioned already. This is really, really good to see, also with the aluminum housing. I think this battery is strong. I really like what I see here. Single wall chop. It should be above a minute already. Having this pushing out 2680-ish. And it was the max I see here. That's good, nice. Let me stop the heat gun. That's really nice to see. So let's continue with a uh, disassemble the battery or look inside and tear it down to, to double check what they have put into the inside and whatnot and how the build quality is. So it was fairly easy at this time taking a couple bolts out on the side and you can just pop open the lid. That is quite refreshing and easy. Then we have this epoxy board here protective I guess to insulate whatever is below so the next thing we can see there are terminals over here on this side we do have the BMS over here as well from the first plans it does look like there are a lot of bolts but let me 
get those, those four bolts out as well. And then we'll continue. So now we can take it out. And here we are. Dang, look at that. <laughs> All right. This looks, first glance, really clean. Don't want to lie. Looks clean. Looks like it's compressed here with, it says a metal aluminum. Yeah, it looks like those tracks are not only used for the wiring, also they're used to compress it. And looks like this, it's a, this auto crate tape what they used here. Of course, I don't know why they're laying here. Oh, it looks like they just moved. Interesting. Probably for during shipping or whatever. Possible that the, those move because they're meant to be underneath here. But it looks like it was either too hot, too cold, too much movement. They, they have adhesive on the other side, but it doesn't look like they did hold up pretty well. So, and it's, yeah, they just fit right there. But it will come loose anyways, because those tracks do not touch, looks like. So that's cool. Let me, I hope you see everything here. Good. So we do have main positive over here, which is a nine gauge silicon wire. Then we do have the main negative over here. Looks a similar size wire. Uh, let me see, it is also eight gauge wire over here. So we have eight gauge from main positive, main negative. We do have hydraulic crimps on those terminals. Then we have, you can see those bus bars laser welded in here on this side as well over here. Uh, we have kind of plastic cover on top. Yeah, so it works. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me try to zoom in a little bit more here on the side. Oop. Hope you can see that. So the bus bars, it looks like they are laser welded to terminals. We do have those plastic covers on top. Oh, do you see it? Yeah. Oh, do you see it? Here it is. And it's just covering everything and insulating everything as well. And then we have a bolt which goes into the bus bar for the balance leads. And then you pop it just on it. So the bus bars work with those plastic caps. That is really well organized. So we see all the balance leads. We do see some clue over here and here in three areas. I'm wondering why. Okay, it's probably just the wire which goes from this side. You can see that wire over here to the other side, connecting to the main positive and the main negative. So they kind of clue tight that there's nothing moving around. That's my guess right now. Everything's nice. This entire frame is looks like also, uh, which way is it? You can see here, my fingers down here. It's um, bolted to the frame, not the frame, the the, the floor of this chassis, this housing. Then we have over here kind of a temperature probe. It's black, it's not white like the temperature high temp cutoff switches, but it is a lot of clue. So let's see if I can get this clue a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it's just an excess amount of... Oh yeah, here it is. Nice. So here, this one is the temperature sensor or probe. So there's a good chance that low and high temp cutoff will work. We do have, yeah, the temperature probe, which is just underneath this blob, touching the first couple, yeah, the first two cells, and with some excess, with some excess uh, wire as well. So that is nice to see and we'll be able to test high and low temp cutoff here. So this is the information of the cells. This beam is tucked away. It's the balance leads have a blob of clue, so nothing's moving around. We have here a positive wire, which is nicely wrapped also in this extra insulator protective. I don't even know what it's called. Maybe you know that and can tell us what it means. This bus bar is a little bent. I guess that's due to how it is located. I should have maybe done it a better route than 
this one would have not been bent. But it is what it is. It works so far, so not anything wrong with it. Yeah, that's that's actually a really solid and great build quality. Yeah, so it is charging again. You should see that here in the bottom corner. Let's see. We'll use the duster again on temperature probe and we'll see what happens. Yes, it has a tall, cold temp cutoff. I just don't know at which temperature it is at. So we did a cold temp test. Let's do the high temp test. And now we're charging here. And there it is. It just stopped. Nice. All right. Low temp and high temp cutoff. That's great to see. That's amazing. I think we can wrap the video up. It does look solid. It really looks well organized. I, I like what I see is like the protective um, plastic here as well, as well as the compression of the steel and the aluminum. I, would say, I think it's aluminum housing and everything else. So that's well made, really well built. That's great craftsmanship, if you ask me. And for sure, um, if, if you're interested, um, please use the link below in the description. If you want to know more about this battery DC house, um, I have not seen anything from them yet. I'm not sure if, if they belong to another company or not. I have uh, to dig into that a little bit more, but this is what you get. This is what you will receive. And uh, price-wise, I think it's pretty attractive at the moment as well, in my opinion. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, for an aluminum housing here. Please put your questions in the comment section below if you want to see anything else with this battery. If you happen to live in LA area and you have a little tiny, <laughs> well, big, whatever, golf cart and you want to maybe um, have a video recorded with this battery as well or maybe another one which i'm currently testing as well um, please reach out to me let me know uh, email is in the about section so just reach out let me know if you have a golf, co golf court um, we want to test it you will be part of the video if you want to you don't have to but uh, it would be amazing just to test it how this battery stands up and maybe i don't know up to four in parallel that's something you want to have because well built low temp cutoff and high temp cutoff. Do you know what would be amazing now having as well? Little heater pads in there. God, wish list is growing. If you have any questions, let me know. This is an amazing build quality of a battery. Happy to see that. And yeah, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like that stuff and wanna see more, especially um, using this one in combination with uh, the MultiPlus and Node-RED up there. Um, everything I'm doing with Node-RED at the moment, this battery is involved as well. So that's quite awesome to see. Thanks for watching. Cheers!